us to talk a little bit about um, networking in the new normal. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And I'm happy to, to answer uh, any questions that um, someone might have at the end of my uh, presentation. So what the, the only dumb question uh, is the unasked question. And I am going to be talking about working from home. Uh, I'm talking to you from my home office in Austin, uh, Texas. So uh, I'm, I'm in hibernation as well as, uh, as, as everyone. Let me, let me say that we are all in this together. Uh, we're all impacted by this. The question is, how are we going to respond? Now, I know some people have said, yeah, you're different. You've got a successful business. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, as, as was mentioned in uh, the intro there, uh, I'm the founder of a networking company. We have 9,500 in-person, face-to-face groups that meet every week. I could have had 35 years of my life go up in viral smoke if we were frozen in fear. And that's not going to happen. And that's part of what I want to talk about today is not being frozen in fear. There will be an impact on everyone's livelihood. But you have a a huge impact if you have a network and if you work your network right now. Uh, What I'm talking, what I'm going to talk about here is physical distancing, not social distancing. You know, there's nothing more frustrating to people who understand the power of networking than not being able to meet with people and make a personal connection. And I totally get that. However, that's the position we're in right now. So um, I'd like to help you work through this. Many of us are working from home. Uh, I'm, I'm working from home. I started my business working from home. I started BNI, which, like I said, has 9,500 locations. Uh, we have 272,000 members worldwide. And I started the business uh, out of my house. And the bottom line here is um, don't stop networking. Just do it differently. Be safe. Do it differently. Um, When I started uh, BNI in 1985, uh, I literally started it in in my garage and in um, a a room above my garage. And I've kind of gone full circle because I now work Uh, Again, from home, we have a corporate office in Charlotte, but I work from home. And so what I want to do is give you some tips on working from home. And then, because I've got 35 years off and on working in home experience, and then I want to talk about networking while you're working from home. Forget about social distancing. I want to talk about physical distancing and the importance of still being networked while working from home. So the first thing I want to mention is... When you're working from home, you should have dedicated workspace. Uh, Even if you don't have a separate office, have a workspace that is where you work. This is, it it could be a table. It could be a corner uh, in, in, in a room. It could be anywhere in the house that you've got available space. Make that your workspace. And make sure that everyone knows that that is your workspace. Um, Second, don't get distracted. I see people... Uh, so often they get distracted by, you know, one thing after another. There's some bright, shiny object. Oh, look at that. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. And that nothing is easier than to get distracted when you're working from home. Don't get distracted. Stay focused on your work schedule and on your plan. Uh, also, when you're working from home, set ground rules. Uh, I worked at home with, with children. It's important to set uh, ground rules uh, when you're working with uh, from home with with family members or, or kids. Now, toddlers and infants are a different story, but um, you know, l- children a little older, make sure they understand that um, that this is your work time, this is your workspace. You need to be working, and and let them know that you'll be available for them when you're free. I remember when I was working from home, on some days my wife wasn't home and I would say to my son, hey, look, you know, at lunch, let's sit down. We'll play a, we'll play a video game together. And he always kicked my butt, but we, we would play a video game uh, while I was at home. So I had work hours, but, um, you know, I found a little time to spend with the kids as well. So set ground rules, be there uh, for them as much as you can. Here's an important one. No social media except for business. Make sure you heard that last part, except for business. 
I'm, I'm very active on social media, very active on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, I, I'm, I'm Instagram, I'm on all of those sites. Uh, and so for business, you want to be doing posting, you want to talk to people, you want to connect with people, comment on other people's posts, but no cat videos. Okay? No cat videos. Don't get caught by one of those bright, shiny objects like, a, like these crazy videos. Now, there's nothing wrong with a cat video. Do it later. Do it not during your work hours. But during the work hours, no per personal social media try to stick strictly to business. Um, which kind of leads to another topic, uh, and that is break time. Uh, it's important to have, it's important to take breaks. You know, when you're working from home, it's easy just to keep working and working and working, but it's important to take a breather from time to time. So, you know, after hours, I, I, I did a radio show and somebody said, uh oh, you know, I, I can't binge watch my uh, favorite shows. Yeah, you can binge watch them, just not during the workday. I know, I know a guy who is who is just in front of the TV. Well, I'm gonna talk about him a little bit more later, but um, when you have a break, um, watch, watch your favorite TV shows, go crazy, read a book. Uh, and if you wanna watch those cat videos then, go watch those cat videos then, but not, not during the work, uh, work time. So we're talking about working from home. The next uh, concept is plan your day. Plan your work and work your plan. Don't let the tail wag the dog. Uh, one way, is to be a zealot about your calendar. I am a zealot about my calendar. I color code my calendar and most calendar programs, Outlook has it, I'm pretty sure Google, uh, the Google can, calendar has it. You can color code uh, your items. So I color code my calendar on the things that uh, have me working on the business versus the things that have me working in the business the things that have to get done. Uh, and, and, the, and the things that I love doing are, are one particular shade, they're very shades of green. Those are the things that I really should be doing as much as possible. So uh, Outlook in particular has a lot of shades of green. So I can look at my day, I can look at today and immediately tell if I'm doing the things that I should be doing to drive the business, which uh, for me are things like this, interviews, Facebook Live, um, speaking engagements when, when, when I wasn't in quarantine like everyone else, um, uh, radio, TV interviews, uh, these are the kinds of things that are, are green for me. It's, it's to the point where uh, my office is 52 steps from my house. As I come down in the morning, my wife will ask me, do you have a green, do you have a green day today? And she knows that when I, when I have various shades of green, I'm doing the things that I'm really passionate about doing that I love doing. And then other, you know, administrative things are blue and travel is in another color, which doesn't show up on my calendar at all right now. Um, so a lot of different activities are in different colors. Red, red's bad. Red's really bad. It usually involves an attorney where I have to talk to about business. And so uh, color code your calendar and, 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 and have a calendar that's blocked off by the half hour or hour. I block off my calendar by the hour. I block off time to think. I block off time to write. And that's a block of time where I have to think about something and I'll you know, be taking notes and working on it or I, I will be writing at certain times. So I try to block off everything so that I'm not wasting time, which is really easy to do from home. You know, turn on the TV, watch something, go you know, watch those cat videos, whatever it is. So I block off every hour of the day with things that I should be working on, including break time. I block those off as well. So color code your activities. It's a concept that I have found really, really helpful. All right, next thing. And this is particular, this is really, I think it's good all the time, but particularly right now. Micro dose your news. Micro dose the news. Limit your intake your news intake right now. Uh, I, I'll tell you, what I do is first thing in the morning, I get up, I don't watch the news on TV because it's repetitive and it may not be what I really need to hear. I, I have mobile apps and so I'll pull up an app and, and, and I'll read what's going on in the world uh, while I'm waiting for you know, a steam shower to get hot, I'll be reading, I'll be reading the news. Uh, then when I am off work, before I go to bed, I check in on the news again on apps. Don't 
don't be obsessed with the news. Gosh, the news is 24 seven COVID virus. And you don't need to keep putting that in your head. We all know, we know the COVID virus is serious. Touch bases, that's just so you're on top of things, but limit it, don't obsess with it. I know this guy, I was gonna tell you the story. I know a guy who's so obsessed with the crisis that he's, he's sitting in front of his TV at home for hours each day watching the pandemic unfold. I believe this is one of the worst things someone can do. The reason for that is the news is all about the sky is falling. This is how bad things are. This is what uh, people are doing wrong. And uh, yeah, there's a, every now and then there's something positive put in, but 95% of it, and I'm being gracious, is bad news. And you don't need that right now. You need, you need to stay connected. I'm not saying eliminate it completely, but you don't need to obsess over it. Don't sit by idly and let this unfold in front of you. What you need to do instead is take action. And I wanna talk about some of the things to take action with, but let's do a quick review on working from home. Um, we're, first of all, no, we're all in this together. If physical distancing, not social distancing. Um, in working from home, you want to um, you want to make sure you have dedicated workspace. Don't get distracted by things. Set ground rules with the people that are there. No social media except for business. Break time. Take make sure to take breaks when you're working from home. Plan your day. I like to color code it. I think it's a great way to manage your day so you know if you're working on it or not, working on the right things or not. And micro dose the news. Uh, yeah, the sky is falling. We all know that. But if you obsess over it. If all you do is focus on problems, you become an expert at problems. What you have to do is spend time finding solutions for you. Spend time finding solutions for you. Look for ways to innovate. Look for ways to add value, to stay connected with people. Do something. Don't do nothing. Now, I'm kind of singing to the choir because you're watching this. But keep doing things like this. And there's a lot of, a lot of things that, that I'll, I'll talk about that you can be doing. You, you can become an expert on the problem as it applies to you, but you have to focus on solutions to do that. A pity party is not going to help you. I know people right now that are having these pity parties and I, and I can understand why. Business is tough. A lot of people are losing money right now. I know, I know about pity parties. I've thrown them for myself. When it's over, I'm in the same situation, but I don't feel any better at all. This is about taking control and doing something right now. I don't know what our future holds, but I do know that if we can't control it, we can definitely influence it. And the way you influence it is by starting to create some strategies on, on the work you're doing. By the way, uh, if you want, I have a blog where I talked about strategies for working from home, which I just gave you. It's ivanmeisner.com, I-V-A-N, Meisner, M-I-S-N-E-R, ivanmeisner.com. Go to March 19th and you'll see all of the strategies that I have on working from home that, to help you. Now, let's talk about uh, networking from home. And then when I've done with this, I'm going to open it up and I'm happy to, to, to answer any question you have. The only dumb question is the unasked question. Uh, and, and so maybe you can feed the questions to me as, as they come in in a little while. Um, now more than ever, you need to activate your network. I believe that it's not what you know or who you know. It's how well you know each other that really counts. One thing I've learned over the years is that fear paralyzes most people. What I suggest is don't let fear paralyze you, let it provoke you. Provoke you to take action. But how can you take action to network when you can't get out in the world and meet people face to face? What I love about technology is that it flattens the communication hierarchy. It allows us to communicate with one another in ways that didn't exist when I started BNI in 1985. Um, presentations like this, online platforms, Zoom, uh, uh, Facebook, they didn't, these are examples that just didn't even remotely exist back in 1985. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that face-to-face -face networking is the most powerful way to connect, 
But when that's not an option, don't throw your hands up and, and do nothing at all. Take action. This is time that you need your network more than ever. Moreover, they need you too. You need your network and your network needs you. I know a woman who shared with, with uh, uh, one of the members of her network, it was a BNI group, that she thought her business was going to go under uh, because of this. And he told her to share that with the group. And when she did, she was overwhelmed with moral support and referrals that would help her through this time. She got, she's getting through the crisis uh, and, and um, is, is doing reasonably well. Um, I could share tons of stories of people that went through the, la the Great Recession and actually did well during the Great Recession uh, because they had a powerful personal network. So having a powerful personal network is important. Now, some of you may be saying, well, that's really good, but I haven't built my network yet. You know, I don't have much of a network. So let's talk about that. There's this old supposed Chinese proverb that uh, goes like this. When, was, when is the best time to plant an oak tree? The answer is 20, 20 years ago. It's the best time to plant an oak tree. Second question is, well, when's the second best time? And the answer is today. So when's the best time to create your network? 20 years ago. But if you haven't developed your network, now is a good time to start. Now is the time that you really want to start to build a network. If you already have a network, even if it's a small one, it's time to activate that network. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to do online face-to-face -face meetings. So connect with people that are in your network or that you would like to have in your network. If you have no network at all, you know, sometimes I'm talking to students and students are saying, I got nothing. Great, what you have, you have some contacts. So talk to those people that are, um, that are those contacts and tell them what field you want to be going into and ask them if they have any uh, contacts that somebody would be willing to just spend 30 minutes with them on a Zoom call uh, just to kind of talk about where they need to be when the quarantine's over and what they need to be doing. And they can mentor them. But if you've got a network, this is the time to reach out to the people that are in your network and say, hey, I'd like to touch bases with you. And just, I want to see how you're doing. You know, tell me how you're doing. Let me see if there's any way I can help you. Maybe you can help me connect with them on Zoom, Skype, go to the meeting, or some other platform. It's, it's not the same as face-to-face, -face, but it is eye-to-eye. -eye. Now, there's a concept that I teach that I think is really important to talk about right now. And that's the VCP process. Visibility, credibility, profitability, VCP. You have to figure out where you are with the person that you're connecting with. Are you just basically a visibility where you don't really know each other well, but you want to get to know them more? Or are you a credibility with the person you're reaching out to? It's somebody that really knows you, you know them, or you're at profitability where you're actually, actually referring business to each other. I'd recommend you start with the people that you're a profitability with. Start with them. If you have any. People that are giving you referrals, you're giving them referrals. People that are really tight in your personal network. You want to reach out to them and see how they are doing. And I'll talk to you about what to, what to talk to them about in particular. You want to then go to the people that you're at credibility with and say, hey, I want to connect. I just see how you're doing. And then those that you're at visibility with, simply say, hey, um, you know, we're all stuck at home. I thought it would be great to, to reach out to some people I've met that I don't know real well and just... Um, you know, learn more about your business and hopefully you can learn about my business and make a connection. And I'm telling you, if you just go through your list of contacts uh, on those three people that you're visibility, credibility, or profitability at, um, then you are going to uh, have lots of things to do that will set you up to be in a stronger place when this craziness is all over. Now, when you do these one-to-ones, uh, do your best to help them or to activate your network to find some way to help them. Uh, I love the question, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? Maybe you'll be able to help them, maybe you won't. But tell me, tell me what I can do for you. And sometimes people will tell me something, there's nothing I can do, and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna write that down. If I know, if I come across anybody that might be able to help you with that, I'm going to refer you. And you know what? Sometimes I do, especially when I'm out there networking, even if it's digitally, you know, online networking, uh, you can find people that might be able to help them with something. 
that it's, it's an old phrase, how can I help you? And I, and I want to talk about that for a moment because I recently did a radio show where the, the host, uh, as I was talking about this very thing, you know, asked people, how can I help you? He, on air, he said, oh, that old phrase, that doesn't work anymore. He said that on air. And I said, well, actually, I, I kind of disagree. It do, I think it does work. And you don't have to use those words. You can use different words. But it's basically to, to pull out of them, you know, what's going on that you might be able to help them with. And he said, uh, yeah, it's just a, a, an idea that's overused. I, I don't think it works. And we continued the conversation uh, for a while, um, uh, the, the radio uh, interview on a different topic. We left that topic. And then after the interview, um, we spoke a little bit off air. And towards the end of our conversation off air, I said, so look, what other experts are you looking for to interview right now? And he said, oh, wow, thanks for asking. Um, so he gave me some ideas and I told him, hey, I know a few really big names, experts in those areas. And I said, hey, would you like me to make an introduction and see if those people uh, would be interested in doing an interview on your show? And he gave me a resounding yes. He said, please. So I made the introduction to both of those people that day by email. I reached out to them and I said, are you interested? Both of them replied back to me that day and said, yes, we would love to do that. The more interviews we can do right now, the better, because we're stuck at home like everyone else. And so I reached out to him and said, this person and this person both said yes to the interviews. Here's their email addresses. It's okay if you contact them. And he, and he wrote me back within moments. And he said, thank you so much for those introductions. I'll reach out to them. And he, he wrote me back later that day and he said, I booked them both. And I wrote to him and I said, and this is an example of another way to ask, how can I help you? And he wrote me back a one word email. He said, touche. And I wrote him back one last time and I, and I said, no, it's not touche. I want, this, this is the way I do business. And if you can find a way to help somebody, you don't have to use the words, how can I help you? You can say, what other kind of interviews are you looking for? That's the same thing said in a different way. And um, it's powerful. One of the best ways to expedite the development of a relationship in your network is to find a way to help somebody. If you can find a way to help somebody that uh, is a force multiplier in in the relationship building. And so I would urge you to ask that question as you're doing these one-to-ones. Now look, if, um, I'm guessing that most of you watching this, you're pretty comfortable with, with uh, the technology, but um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, using one of these, go old school and use one of these devices. Uh, you know, you can actually talk to people on those things. My kids think they're just for social media, but you, you can do a lot more. Uh, it's, not, it's not quite the same as face-to-face. -face. And I don't think it's as good as doing a, even a, a, a Skype one-to-one. -one. But uh, a phone call, I, you know, I have a guy that I know really well. He's, he's a good friend. He's in his 70s. He, he doesn't use Skype um, or go to meeting or Zoom. So I call him and I talk to him and, and, and that's fine. You know, use the, the, the tool that is most effective. Now, here's a technique to use as you do one-to-ones. I call it the GAINS exchange. It's an acronym. Goals, accomplishments, interests, networks, and skills. GAINS, G-A-I-N-S. You can find material on my blog at ivanmeisner.com. Just type in GAINS, G-A-I-N-S. You'll find something. I also wrote about it in a book I wrote called Networking Like a Pro. So you can find it in, um, in detail in Networking Like a Pro. Um, I recommend that you do the gain exchange with people that you're at credibility or profitability with. People that you're at visibility, they may not get it. I think it works, but they may not get it at first. So start with the profitability and, and the, the um, credibility, people that you really got a relationship with. So it, it's an acronym and, and you know, there are forms in the book, but you don't need a form. You just, you just send them, hey, tell me about, your goals, tell me about some of your accomplishments, tell me about some of your interests, some of your networks, and some of your skills. And, and before we meet one-to-one -one by Zoom, um, send that to me. And then I'm going to send you mine. 
what my goals, my accomplishments, my interests, my networks, my skills are. And try and 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 then I'd like you to share yours and I'll share mine. Now the reason this is effective is that building a network is about building a relationship. And if you can find overlapping areas of interest, then you build the relationship much quicker. You build the relationship much quicker. Um, when I tested this concept out 25 years ago, 20 years ago, I did it in a BNI group. And uh, we were doing this exercise and there were two guys that were together to do it. And they'd both been in the chapter for nine or 10 months, overlapping for nine or 10 months. They'd never done business with each other. And I said, you know, you, you do it, then you do it. And they were like, this, this, this is, actually one of them said to me, this is weenie. That's what he called it. He said, this is weenie. I, I don't want to do it. I'm like, okay, do me a favor. Just do it. And I'm going to hand a survey out afterwards. And just in the survey, put down, you thought it was weenie. Just so I know. You know, but try it out first. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. So they tried it out. They went through, you know, one set his goals, the other did his goals. One did accomplishments, the other did. Then they got the interest. They never got past interest. Never got past interest because they both found out they were both soccer coaches for their son's soccer teams. Oh yeah, it was all over then. They talked soccer. They talked, you know, coaching techniques. They talked uh, about the teams they were playing and they ended up deciding right then and there that they would scout for each other. One guy would go scout the team that the other guy was going to be playing his son. And then the other guy would scout uh, his team and they'd take some videos and they'd share them with each other. And they became really close very quickly. And guess what happened? Within a month, they passed each other referrals. They'd been in the group for nine months together, never passed a referral. But once they built that bond, that relationship over soccer, for crying out loud, so over soccer, then they became important to each other and they really wanted to help each other out. And they both gave each other a referral within a month after that. So the idea with the gains exchange is to find overlapping areas of interest that you then make a connection with that other person so that the bond becomes a little tighter so that you can uh, then lead to having a referral relationship over time. You can find details on the gains exchange on page 58 of Networking Like a Pro, second edition, the second edition of uh, uh, Networking Like a Pro, page 58. Okay. I've got some closing uh, thoughts and then I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that uh, you might have. And, and Jacob, I think uh, if you want to, uh, um, coordinate the questions. I'm happy to have you do that. But let me, let me do some closing thoughts here. You can be, in my opinion, empowered by utilizing that network of contacts that you have to weather this storm. This will pass. Uh, when it does, you, you will be better positioned than any other people in your industry because you've activated your network and are still using it while others are paralyzed by what's happening. Have a plan, work that plan. Don't let fear paralyze you, let it focus you. Uh, don't be paralyzed, be provoked, provoked to take action. You know, I, I wrote about the need for networks to use technology back in 2018. For networks, networks like BNI. In 2018, I wrote an article for Entrepreneur. If you go to entrepreneur.com and look at my column uh, there, I have a column there. They, they, you'll see that I wrote about the, the title of the article, uh, Why the Remote Meetings of the Future Will Be Face-to-Face. -face. So just do a search on why the remote meetings of the future, and uh, you'll find my article. And in that article, I, I, thought, I wrote that I thought networks would move to online because technology because what was happening with technology that within five to 10 years, mixed reality technologies and um, 3D technologies are gonna be a game changer because they're even more effective than this, you know, something like Facebook Live or Zoom. And uh, I, I thought that this would happen within five to 10 years. Well, I didn't see the COVID virus. So when the COVID virus hit, my company had to innovate. And I started this talk talking about the importance 
for you to innovate right now. Uh, find ways to innovate. And all of a sudden we had to innovate long before I ever thought that we were gonna have to innovate. And what we did as a company was we literally flipped 9,500 groups to an online platform in a matter of weeks. Now, that's what we did. You need to think about how you can innovate to get out the other side of this. But you, you are the most qualified to think about that. Wrap your head around that. Talk to people about it. Bounce ideas off of your friends and associates. and possibly do business uh, during this difficult time so that when, when, we're, when this is passed and it will pass, you will be better positioned um, than anyone else. We flipped 9,500 groups to an online platform literally in just weeks. Today, more than ever, you need your network. It can help you get through this and out the other side. That's what a network is for. Uh, you stay healthy and let the network help you stay connected. So those are, are my uh, thoughts on, on working from home and dealing with the COVID virus. What I'd love to do now is um, just answer any questions that people might have. I know there's a chat box here. Uh, Jacob, maybe you can, can uh, post any um, questions that come up on Facebook. I'm happy to answer those. Uh, and so um, I think Brian, uh, Brian must be online. Brian uh, posted on the chat box. Uh, Brian's my social media coordinator. Uh, consider attending a BNI online meeting and he gave you a, a place where you can go to if you want to visit BNI. BNI is actually, it's easier to join, visit and join BNI than ever or any network that's online because uh, you don't have to get up you know, at ODARC 30 to come to the meetings. You can do it from home. You don't have to, you know, buy breakfast. Um, you can do your meeting in sweatpants and nobody will ever know. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a lot of benefits and we're finding that the online platform is actually working. And I wouldn't be surprised if when this is over that, um, you know, the genie's out of the bottle. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of BNI groups uh, transition to a hybrid of some kind where they're meeting face-to-face -face and they're meeting uh, online, you know, some weeks face to face, some weeks online. So I, I think that's a, a, a distinct likelihood. And Brian has posted a number of other um, other things. So uh, Zipporah says, "I don't like the BNI fees." Uh, I I don't know what I did my two. Oh, you you visited too. Yeah, look, Zipporah, maybe it's not for you. Um, I don't know what business you're in, but I'm sure you charge. Um, there's a cost. Uh, you may not realize this, but there are over 10,000 people who work for BNI. This is a company. Uh, Jacob mentioned in the beginning it was nonprofit. That's not true. We're not a nonprofit. We're a franchise. Uh, and there's a cost to do it. But uh, I got to tell you, it's the, I think uh, networking and referral marketing are the most cost-effective way to build your business. Last year in BNI, we passed 16.3 million referrals in January. I'm sorry, uh, 12.3 million referrals. We generated 16.7 billion dollars worth of business for our members. That's what those referrals uh, turned into. So if you're going to advertise, uh, it's going to cost money. If you're going to join the Chamber of Commerce, it's going to cost money. B and I cost money. Um, it's, it's a business just like the business that you're in and whatever you charge. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. So jumping into the, first of all, Ivan, thank you so much. It was incredible. We're going to jump to the first question from Nitin Sawant. I hope you're, we're pronouncing it right. Hi, Ivan. My name is Nitan. Nitin. I'm from BNI Miracle, Mumbai. It's great to watch you speak. My question is, I'm a choreographer in Bollywood. How do I start any conversation with anyone who is in another country and I wanted to get connected to? So I think the answer to that question, you might want to mute your mic uh, so it doesn't uh, reverb. Um, I think that the answer to that question is um, pretty straightforward. What tends to happen oftentimes is people will reach out to somebody and say, hey, I sell this. And they go right into sales mode. And that's a mistake. Uh, you 
You don't want to do that. Spasm and people just can't help themselves. Don't do that. Instead, reach out to people. And you know, if you're on LinkedIn, use LinkedIn. If you're uh, if you're in BNI, use BNI Connect, which is like LinkedIn, if, except for BNI members. It's a walled garden. Which, by the way, is another benefit of BNI is that you you have a, you're connected to 270,000 BNI members all around the world in that platform. So you connect with them and you say, I would love to do a virtual one to one. I'm looking to do business in the US, I'm looking to do business in the UK, I'm in India. Uh, I'm, I would love to do a one-to-one -one with uh, some people to find out about your business and see if I can help you and maybe you'll um, listen about my business and maybe you can help me. And, and that's the way I would reach out to people. If you reach out to people just saying, hey, I sell widgets, anybody interested, they're gonna, it's a spam. Even if you use BNI Connect, people will get upset. It's because you're spamming them. Don't spam them. Instead, invest in them. Invest in them by giving them your time, your 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 conversation. Uh, and so I think that's the way to reach out and do it. And well, I know it is. I've seen it done by a lot of people, and it works really well. Great question. Happy to answer it. What else? And then she had another question: Is how many one to one do you think is good enough in a week? So that's a fantastic question. And I am going to refer you to a podcast that I did. Um, let me find the, let me find the podcast number. If you go to bnipodcast.com, whether you're a BNI member or not, this data will help you. Um, bnipodcast.com and go to podcast number 570, 570, episode 570. It's called More One-to-Ones Equal More Referrals. That's the name of the podcast. It's episode 570. So just do a, a search on, in quotation marks, episode 570, and you'll, it'll, it'll take you right to it. Um, someone did uh, a study. Uh, of, now, this is a BNI study, but it's, it's relevant because it's about one-to-ones. How many one-to-ones did someone do, and how much business did they give? And how much business did they receive? And this should answer your question. People who um, did one one-to-one -one a month or less, one or less a month, compared to people who did four one-to-ones a month. In other words, they did one a week, four or more. They did at least one a week. They passed 100% more referrals. They, they doubled the amount of referrals uh, than the people who were doing one a month. So those who are doing four a month passed twice as many referrals as the people doing one a month. But here's the really powerful thing. They also received twice as many referrals as the people who did one a month. So the people who did four a month or more, uh, gave and received twice as much referrals as the people who did one. So the answer to your question, I believe, is one a week or more. But, but remember this, networking is a marathon, not a sprint. So you may say, well, one a week, Jeez, I could do five a week. Okay, yeah, maybe right now because, <laughs> because we're all sitting at home, but bring it back in after a while because you'll burn yourself out. I have seen so many people burn themselves out networking. Don't do that. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So once things settle down, I'd recommend one a week with people that are in your personal network. They may be people that are in an organization you belong to like BNI. They may be people that are just in your personal network. Um, one a week, probably no more than two a week on average. That's, that's my advice. That was a fantastic question, by the way. Thank you for asking it. Uh, what else? Another question we have from Anonymous. I sell merchant cash advance. How do I network slash sell in the market at this time? Well, I'm not sure. You know, I don't know what business you're in, so I can't tell you uh, how to sell in the market this time. 
what I, what I think uh, most people need to be doing is uh, working their network and pouring into themselves. Now, there are some businesses right now that are doing just fine. You know, I, I own, I own a real, I've been investing in real estate. Before I started b and I, I started a real estate business. So I have a real estate business that's 38 years old. I have some businesses that I, I think they need hardship help and we're giving them uh, hardship help on their rent because they, they, they're completely out of business. Then I got other businesses like Pizza Hut. <laughs> they're doing great. So it really depends on what business you're in. If, if you're in a certain kind of business, you might be doing fine right now. If you're like most businesses, you're struggling. So I can't tell you how to, to build your business. This is where you, you got you to gotta think outside the box and really innovate. And if you can't think of anything in the meantime, you need to be pouring into yourself and into your network, which is what I've told you. Connect with the people in your network. Tell them about your challenges. Ask them if they have some suggestions. They know who you are. They know what you do. They may have some good suggestions for you. Um, pour into yourself intellectually. You know, watching webinars like this, this is time well spent for, for people, I believe, is pouring into themselves, getting good ideas uh, that they can then apply. YouTube, you know, watch good videos. Forget about the cat videos during the day. Watch those at night. But during the day, watch experts, people that you admire and respect. Listen to what they have to say. There's a lot of people talking right now about how to do business during this crisis. And, you know, you may get some good suggestions. I gave you some on working from home. I gave you some on, on how, to, how to do one-to-ones with people. And uh, people with a different focus will give you other suggestions. These are the things that you need to be doing right now. That's my advice. I hope that, that helps. What else? We have from Joey Kest. Can you give any cold networking tips? Cold networking tips. Um, I assume you mean um, cold in terms of you, you meet somebody. I, I'm guessing we're talking about face-to-face -face now. You meet them cold, what do you do? So I'm going to assume that's the question. If I'm wrong, uh, give, a, give another, post an explanation and, and I'll take another swing at it. Um, so one of the things that I talk about in a couple of my books, uh, one of them is um, also networking like a pro, the 12 by 12 by 12 rule. You meet somebody for the very first time, um, what do you do? So when you go to a networking event, uh, the 12 by 12 by 12 rule, first of all, how do you look 12 feet away? Do you look like a professional? It shocks me the way people dress at business meetings. Uh, if you want people to buy your products or services, don't go in shorts and sandals. It just, it doesn't give the kind of impression that you want. Now, maybe there are some areas, you know, in, in Honolulu, in Maui, I've done presentations there. It's a whole different, it's a whole different atmosphere. My advice to you is always dress at or above your clientele. Not way above, but at or above your clientele. So how do you come across 12 feet away? Do you look the part? How do you come across 12 inches away? Now you don't get, don't get 12 inches away from somebody, but how do you come across up close? Um, and there we're talking about attitude. Right now, uh, and, and, and I, I started talking about this during the recessions because during recessions, the only thing people will talk about is how bad business is. Well, that's the worst thing to do, really, and it is to talk about how bad business is. Unless you're talking to someone that you're at credibility or profitability with, and you, you can, you can you know, kind of share some of your challenges, that's fine. But at some point, especially with people that you don't have a real good relationship with, you want, and you're meeting, you're saying you're meeting them cold, don't tell them your sorrows. You're meeting someone cold, don't tell them your sorrows. Tell them positive things that you're doing. And I remember I met a, a guy, uh, during the recession, during one of the several recessions BNI has been through, uh, who said, I, um, I said, Hi, you know, so how's business? And then as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, why did I say that? Because he's in real estate. I saw it on his tag, real estate market plummeted. And he said to me, um, oh, business is fantastic. And I'm like, whoa, business is fantastic? He said, yeah. I said, you're in real estate. He said, yeah. He said, is this your first year in real estate? He said, no, 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 I've been in real estate for more than a decade. And I said, well, how could this be your best year? 
It's a true story. He reached into his pocket and he, and he put on a button. And the button said, I refuse. I absolutely refuse to participate in the recession. And I looked at him, I looked at the button. I'm like, that's it? You got a button? He said, well, no, it's more than a button. It's an attitude. And my attitude is, I'm not going to participate in the recession. I'm going to look for opportunities while everyone else is doing the pity party thing. I'm going to look for opportunities. And I said, okay, school me a little bit here. Take me to school. How do you have opportunities in the real estate market when it has plummeted? He said, easy. I'm focusing on two markets. One, first time home buyers. I'm contacting people who, who I've talked to in the past, but couldn't afford a home. And I'm saying, real estate on sale. Mortgage rates are low. Now's the time. You may not ever see this opportunity again to buy at this price. And, and I'm selling a lot of homes to first time home buyers. I said, okay, what's the second one? He said, real estate investors. Uh, he said, I'm calling real estate investors who buy uh, commercial properties. Like, like my, I don't have any resident. I have one residential piece, but all, all commercial stuff. He says, I'm talking to people who buy commercial stuff in large residential like uh, apartments. Uh, and I'm going to them and I'm saying, now's the time to invest. If you don't invest right now, you, you are banned from telling me a year from now, oh, I should have bought that condo complex or that apartment complex that you showed me. I should have bought it a year ago. You cannot tell me that a year from now. And they'll say, yeah, I want to do that. He said, let me show you a few places. He says, I'm selling more uh, investment property than I've ever sold. And I'm selling more first-time home buyers. So when I said to you, think about how you can innovate. You have to think about your business and what what you can do to innovate, what markets are available right now, if any, and, and focus on those. So that's the second 12, it's attitude. The third 12 is, what are the first 12 words you say? 12 by 12 by 12. How do you come across 12 feet away? How do you come across up close? And what are the first 12 words you say? Now, honestly, when you're meeting someone for the first time, what you should do is let them talk first. So tell me about yourself and what you do and then ask them some questions. But when you get to, to say what you do, you want to have, um, you want to use an effective USP, unique selling proposition. A unique selling proposition is short and sweet. A dozen words. One of my favorites is done by a company called Ascentive. It's a, it's a coaching company, A-S-E-N-T-I-V. They say, we help people work less, uh, make more and create referrals for life. I think that's exactly 12 words. We help people work less, make more and, and create referrals for life. And that's their unique selling proposition. You need to find a unique selling proposition that works for you. And then do what my friend Sam Horn calls the eyebrow test. Give your unique selling proposition to someone. Sam Horn, uh, a, a woman who wrote the book Pop and several other books. Great lady, I know her really well. Uh, she calls it the eyebrow test. So what you do is when you give the unique selling proposition, if their eyebrows scrunch down, you've lost them. They don't get it. That's not a good unique selling proposition. When, and some people might do it, but when the majority of people go, uh, tell me about that. You've lost them. They may say, tell me about that, but you've lost them. What you want to do, is you want to find a unique selling proposition where most people go, tell me about that. Same words, but look at their eyes. They scrunch down, you've lost them. You're, you've confused them. If they go up, you've got them. Then you can go into more detail. 12 by 12 by 12. The last 12 or what are the first 12 words you say? You should ask about them first. But once you've done that, then you should also, um, you should start with a unique selling proposition. That's my advice. You can also find that in Networking Like a Pro. That's in that book as well, as well as uh, avoiding the networking disconnect. Great question. What else? Okay, we have, we have eight more questions. Nine more now. Okay.
Okay, hopefully uh, we can do them. Okay, Sam Stern, how did you grow your business to the point where you are? And then second question was, who are your must-haves in your network profession-wise? How did I grow uh, my business? Uh, so I grew my business by doing a lot of one-to-ones. Uh, I really did a ton of one-to-ones in the early days um, where I got to know people um, and you know they would know, like, and trust me. And so... Uh, I, I think that's one of the best ways to make connections with people. Um, and so that's what I would recommend that you do. There's, there's no, there, there's no secret sauce other than building relationships. I think that networking is all about re relationships. Networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about cultivating relationships with other business professionals. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's a solid foundation to build a long-term successful business. And so uh, it, it, it's, you, you got to spend some time networking. If you don't spend time networking, how else are you going to build your business? Do you want a cold call? Do you want to advertise? Look, I believe in advertising. I'm a believer in advertising, depending on the kind of business you're in. I've owned businesses that needed to advertise. When I owned a travel agency years ago, we had to advertise. That was important. So, uh, I believe in advertising, but I have asked audiences. I, I, I've asked audiences of hundreds and hundreds, a thousand people or more. And I've, I've said, how many of you have gotten all the business that you need this year from the advertising that you've done? Now, I, I asked that question before, you know, in big events, not during the COVID. So uh, how many of you have gotten all the business you, you need from the advertising you've done? And I look around the room. I have never had anyone raise their hand ever. And I've been asking that question for years. So how else are you going to build your business? PR? Well, I believe in PR, but even my publicist says, you're not going to build your business off of PR. It's a way to build brand recognition. Social media. Well, it depends on the business that you're in. Uh, I'm a big believer in social media. I'm really active on Facebook. And I told you, but um, I don't get new members, very many new members from Facebook. Um, I, I don't. It's, a, it's about brand development, brand recognition. Social media is really important, but it's not necessarily going to, you know, turn over immediately for you in generating business, except for certain kinds of businesses. So I think networking is the most powerful way to build your business. And, um, and so you got to devote the time to do it. Now, there was a second part to that question. I don't think I answered it. Jacob, did I answer the second part to that? Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So the second part was, who are your must-haves um, in the in your in your network um, professionally? Um, so, it, 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 I think the must-haves vary based on the profession you're in. So let's talk about that. Um, uh, in, in a number of my books, including uh, Networking Like a Pro and some of my other books, uh, I talk about contact spheres. So. The real question is, who are the must-haves for you in your business? And um, I, I would say they are people that fit your contact sphere. Now, a contact sphere is a group of business professionals who have a symbiotic relationship. They help, they support one another. For example, a, a banker, a CPA, uh, an attorney, a business consultant, they all have clients that have kind of similar needs in different areas. And so that's a contact sphere. So you want to surround yourself with people that are in that contact sphere if you're one of those professions. Um, here's one of my favorites, the caterer, the florist, the photographer, the travel agent, the jewelry company. I call that the wedding mafia. You know, once they bring you in, they don't let you out. They, they can refer each other really well. So what you want to do is build your contact sphere. Think about what professions are symbiotic to yours. And that's where you want to begin in really moving towards profitability with at least one person in each one of those professions. Uh, you can find, if you go to IvanMeisner.com and type in power team, which is a context sphere put to work um, or context sphere, you'll find more on that as well as in several of my books. Uh, I'm happy to take another question or two. Zipporah keeps asking about, she wants free news, Zipporah. Uh, yeah, I'd listen, we would love to give everyone free dues. It's the best way for us to go out of business in about 30 days. Uh, so 
ain't going to happen. You can ask, it's not going to happen. I'll tell you what we all have done with BNI is that some of our members uh, have hardship needs and uh, we do have a program right now. If you are an existing BNI member, um, reach out to your local executive director and it's, uh, we do have that in place for the existing uh, BNI people. Uh, look, I'd love to do it for free, but we do have 10,000 employees. They kind of want to get paid. So uh, not going to happen. Other question. Okay, Brian just wanted me to mention that all the links and, and all the articles that we mentioned are in the chat box and on the Facebook page. Okay, next we have, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in a current situation where supposedly everything, oh, this is from Niha. Uh, yeah, I'm in a current situation where supposedly everything might be paralyzed for another three months, if not more than that. Would asking for referral sources be a better idea as active business? is suspended. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, re re read it to me one more time, if you don't mind. Okay. In current situation where supposedly everything might be paralyzed for another three months, yeah. if not more than that, would asking for referral sources be a better idea as active business if it's suspended? If it's suspended, well, if it's an active business, I'm not sure I see, uh, if it's an active business, I'm not sure it's suspended. If, if there's any way you can work from home, I would recommend uh, that you work from home and ask for referrals. If there is no way that you can work from home and ask for referrals because you can't conduct your business. For example, if you own a bar, you may not be able to conduct your business. Although I see a lot of restaurants that are doing takeout, um, you know, they're getting innovative. Uh, in in Austin, where I'm where I'm where I live, I saw one uh, really well-known barbecue restaurant, who obviously is closed down, but they're doing takeout, and they had a vendor who was one of the street vendors. You know, they have um, uh, walk-up uh, street vendor uh, that did these amazing pretzels, and they knew this guy was going to go out of business. They joined together and they they did barbecue takeout. And they had pretzels and they were doing both orders from the same location of takeout and, and delivery. And uh, so there was somebody, there was a company that helped another company. Um, so if, you, if, if there's any way that you can work, you should be asking for referrals. If there's any way that, you, if you're just in a business that you can't do, and I think there are many businesses can do something. You could be doing things online like this. Not every business, but a lot of businesses just assume they can't do anything. I mean, come on. I run an organization that meets face-to-face. 9,500 groups face-to-face. -face. It would have been easy for us to go, well, what are we going to do? We're going to have to close our doors. Um, but no, we found a solution. So try to find a solution. And yes, ask for referrals. If you absolutely can't do that, then you got to spend this time pouring into yourself. Don't be, don't be doing the pity party thing, focus on pouring into yourself so that you're better prepared when we do get out. And I'd be surprised, by the way, if it's three months. I'd really be surprised. I think things are gonna lighten up uh, far sooner than that. But I'm not a health professional, so uh, I don't know. Um, okay, we have one, we have, a, a, let's take one more. Yeah, I'm happy to take, yeah, I'm happy to take one or two more. And I see one or two other questions that are on the chat room. What's the question you've got? Okay, so we have from Joseph DiCara. I love BNI. I'm in the largest chapter in my, in my region, BNI Enterprise in Rock, Westchester, New York. I own a digital media company and we have created videos to build brands. It's been like gasoline for my business. I'm the education coordinator and I've been thinking about shooting videos of the education moments during this time professional vlogging style videos that we can also share on our social media. What do you think about this idea? Also, are you familiar with Gary V? Duh. If so, what do you think of him? Yeah, I'm familiar with him. I don't know him really well. I am familiar with him. I know he's got good content. Um, I, I think your idea is brilliant. I would definitely uh, do it. I'm glad you're one of those businesses that, um, the, that the COVID virus has uh, helped your business and there are some where that's the case and so um that's fantastic but i think the kind of videos that you're talking about the shooting and showing online the bni online platform i think it's a great idea you want to make sure and practice a little bit because it's a little tricky showing a video 
uh, via Zoom, uh, but it can be done and I've seen it done. It's a little glitchy, but it, it, it's done and, and I love the concept, brilliant idea. And um, if you want to connect with me, I think it's such a good idea. If you want to connect with me, I'm happy to do a video for your chapter. Um, connect with me on Facebook as a private message, and I'll send you a little form that you can complete um, to do a video message for your chapter. You also have a second part where I'm a millennial. How do we get more millennials to join? Yeah, so the best way to bring the best way to get millennials to join any network, whether it be BNI or any network, is to have a millennial invite a millennial. An old guy with gray hair like me is probably not the best person to be bringing in millennials. So networks are by nature clumpy. That's that's the technical term. They're 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 cluster like. We tend to surround ourselves with people like us. And it, I'm not talking about just ethnicity, but age, uh, sometimes uh, uh, gender, uh, socioeconomic background, educational background. We tend to hang out with people that are a lot like us. But the truth is, the more diverse the network, the more powerful it is. Because if you have a diverse network and you have somebody who's not like you in your network, they are a connector to another cluster of people that are like them. And so if you have a lot of people who uh, are diverse in your network, you will have a much more powerful network than the average person does. So millennials are important to bring into your network. And the best way to get them is to start with someone who's in there. Surely there's one millennial in there and start with them and, and work with them in inviting people to your network so that you get more millennials in there. Also remember, that millennials, um, you know, are millennials in the in the in what's now being called the centennials. They're young, and and we don't teach this in colleges and universities, and so they don't necessarily know the power of networks. They do online, but they don't understand the face to face stuff. And so, give them time. When I started BNI in 1985, I was 28 years old. I started with one chapter, and uh, I was the youngest person in that chapter. Everyone else was older than me. So um, it, understand that you're not going to get a ton of millennials in your network until they start. The average age in BNI is in the 40s. Yeah, we have some in their 20s and 30s, a lot in the 40s, some in the 50s, 60s, and beyond. But um, so, you know, have a millennial, bring a millennial. That's my advice. So great Thanks questions, so everyone. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Any last so we have one. Uh, I'll close it up. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Um, okay. So you want to take one more? Or we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sure. I'll take one more. Okay. From anonymous. Hi. I just lost my job. How do I start my consulting company and use networking in this current circumstances? So, the first thing I would do uh, is, uh, I, I would, you know, get some kind of certification. I don't know what your background is. You know, I was a management consultant, um, but I had my doctoral degrees in organizational behavior, so I had a lot of training. If you don't have much training, he said he wanted to be a consultant, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Consultant. So a consultant or a coach, my advice is get some training. If you, if you don't have the training, get the training. Because it's easy to, to think you can be a consultant because you've been in business, but it's different being a consultant. So get some training. There are a lot of online platforms that do coach training. Uh, there are some that even do consulting training, but you want to have a little, you want to have some kind of credential. You don't need, you don't need a PhD, trust me. Uh, but you do need to go into it with a little bit of preparation. Now's the time to do that. Now's the time to get that kind of certification online so that you can prepare. The other thing I would recommend you do is reach out to people who are coaches, who are consultants, and ask them your questions. Ask them, how did you start? How do you get clients? Um, you know, what were some of the mistakes you made? So that when this is all over, you can start at a run rather than start from scratch. So talk to people who are in there, get some kind of certification, pour into yourself. Hey, look, I'm working on a certification right now. I, I, I'm on a, doing a sommelier cert certificate. I love wine, so I'm doing online courses on wines right now because I got time. And so it's a great time to pour into yourself. 
I hope that answers the question. Uh, these were really fantastic questions. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Jacob. I appreciate it. I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much, Ivan, for everything and giving the Power Entrepreneur uh, the opportunity to have you on board. My pleasure. Anytime. Good luck, everybody. And remember, you stay healthy, but stay connected. That's really important. Thank you.